Next, you will learn about radiation modeling in Fluent. Remember that radiation modeling is only available with the enterprise or premium licensing levels. It is not available for the pro licensing level. To begin with, radiative heat transfer is a mode of energy transfer where energy is transported by electromagnetic waves. Because of this, it is different than conduction or convection, which require interaction and contact of matter. When we talk about thermal radiation, we usually mean radiation which is detected as heat or light, and this covers a subset of the total electromagnetic spectrum. Radiation can be an important mode of heat transfer in numerous applications, and in the picture, you can see just a small number of examples, including solar loading in HVAC applications, automotive headlamps, and furnaces for producing glass. Some aspects of radiation that are useful to keep in mind are that in semi-transparent bodies, such as glass or fluids such as combustion product gases, radiation is a volumetric phenomenon because emissions can escape from bodies. However, in opaque bodies, like cement, radiation is essentially a surface phenomenon. An important question to consider is when do you need to include radiation in your heat transfer model? The radiative flux is proportional to the temperature raised to the fourth power. So what you can do is estimate the minimum and maximum temperatures in your system and use them to compute a representative radiation heat flux like you see here. Next, do the same thing for conduction or convection and then compare the two fluxes. If the radiation is about the same order of magnitude as convection or higher, then a radiation model should be used. This is usually true at high temperatures, but radiation can sometimes also be important at temperatures lower than you might expect, so it's a good idea to do this kind of estimate before setting up your simulation. If you determine that radiation is important, the next thing you have to do is activate a radiation model, which you can do in the ribbon. Radiation is located in the models group of the setting up physics tab. You can see there are a few models, and there's not enough time to discuss each of the models, but I will explain some factors to consider when deciding which model to use, and later there will be a table showing what models are most often used in common applications. One important factor is the optical thickness. It is defined as the product of the mean beam length, L, which can be considered to be the distance between two walls, and the sum of the adsorption and scattering coefficients, alpha and sigma. The scattering coefficient is often zero unless there's a lot of dust or other particles in the air. And an important point about the absorption coefficient is that it is different from the absorptivity of a surface. Instead, it is defined for the fluid or solid material between surfaces, and it represents how strongly the material absorbs radiation. A fluid is considered to be optically thin when it does not absorb significant radiation at the wavelengths where heat transfer occurs. In optically thin systems, radiation only interacts with internal walls or with the boundaries of the domain. Air is a good example of an optically thin fluid. On the other hand, if a solid or fluid absorbs and re-emits radiation, we say that it is optically thick. Optical thickness is not the only factor that affects radiation model selection but it can be used as an initial criterion to narrow down the number of choices. The surface-to-surface -surface model, also known as the S2S model, can be used only if the optical thickness is zero, and the same is true for the solar load model, although that model can handle the presence of windows. The Rossland model is only valid if the optical thickness is very high, so it is rarely used. The P1 model, can be used if the optical thickness is around one or higher. The discrete ordinates model, which is often just called the DO model, and the discrete transfer method can be used with any value of optical thickness. The Monte Carlo model can also be used with any optical thickness. In terms of accuracy, DO and Monte Carlo are generally the most accurate, although S2S can be equally accurate when the optical thickness is zero. Now I want to briefly discuss heat flux reporting in Fluent. In the Flux Reports panel, 
there are two options related to heat transfer, total heat transfer rate and radiation heat transfer rate. Total heat transfer rate includes all fluxes, conduction, convection, and radiation, and therefore the net result should be zero, or more precisely, close enough to zero, and both user sources, like you define from a cell zone conditions panel, and DPM sources are reported in this panel and included in net results. Radiation heat transfer rate only reports the net radiative flux, and in general, its sum should not be zero because radiation can be absorbed by the media in the domain. Finally, let's summarize what you have learned in the video 